Praise the Lord, saints. We thank God for another chance, another opportunity to do the work he has set before us to do. We thank him for waking us and starting us on our way. We oh, bless the Lord today. Somebody help me say, My hallelujah belongs to you, O oh Lord. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you, O oh Lord. My hallelujah belongs to you. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it, Lord. You deserve it. My hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, help me say it today. My hallelujah belongs to you. Yes. My hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, Lord. My hallelujah belongs to you. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it, Lord. You deserve it. He deserves it all today. All of the glory belongs to him. Praise the Lord today, saints. We want to take a look today um, at being a part of the body of Christ. Amen. It is important that we recognize that it's not that we're not individually given a direction to be to be uh, out, more outstanding than, uh, than others. No, we are to work together. Hallelujah. God bless today. You who are members of the College Chapel Baptist Church, God bless you. Um, those who are listening from Texas, Louisiana, Virginia, Tennessee, uh, Denver, Colorado, yay, California. Uh, we ask God's blessings upon you. We pray for families that have been, uh, that are grieving today. Amen. We, we know that we did not come here to stay. Hallelujah. But we're asking God to mend and to heal broken hearts. Uh, in relationships that are uh, torn asunder and those he has called home. Uh, we recognize that we uh, we must share this word, this gospel, uh, with the dying world. Come on and turn with me today. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. He, he, he deserves all of the blessing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Amen. And go down or move down to verse 27. Yes. Praise the Lord. We are, we are in the midst of a storm uh, today here in, in Georgia. And we pray that uh, God's safety on all who are going to go through the storm. Amen. 27 says, Now ye are the body of Christ and members of in particular, amen. Just that one verse today uh, we want to um, to look at and perhaps um, get the benefit <clears throat> from his words on today, amen. It's, it's one thing uh, to know that the scripture teaches concerning the past. We look at the Old Testament, yet uh, it is something else um, to put those great truths of Scripture into practice in our present day. Uh, the picture of the church uh, contained in the Old or in the New Testament is different from the image that comes to mind when one speaks about the church of today. Wow, it's a little strange. There's some places, some churches you can walk into and you really don't feel like you're a part of the church. You kind of feel like a visitor, if you 
will instead of a part of that body of Christ. We need to study afresh. We need to look at it anew, what the New Testament has to say about the church, and then put forth a sincere effort to be the church in this present day. Amen. The church is more uh, than an organization. The church is an organism. Amen. Jesus, uh, the Christ, is the source of the life of the church that is his body. He came to earth to do what? To die on the cross that we might receive the gift of eternal life. Eternal life should be thought of as a uh, qualitative rather than a quantitative. What do you mean, Reverend? Well, um, the quality of one's character is what ought to be counted. Uh, who, who are you in Christ Jesus? And uh, since you met him, has there been a change uh, in your quality of life? A not quantitative, not how many members you have, but rather it is what kind of quality do you have since you met Jesus and since he has come in uh, to your life? Amen. He does not deposit junk, but the riches and the volumes that we can receive from him by allowing him, listen, did you hear what I said? Allowing him to take up residence uh, with inside of us. That just means that he's standing at the door. I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> he's standing at the door of your heart, knocking. He wants to come in. If you would just open up the door, you'll find out that Christ uh, is the sustainer of life in the body. In his initial announcement to uh, the apostles concerning the church, he promised to uh, propitiate the institution by his works and his accomplishments and his redemptive purpose. You, you recall him saying in Matthew 16 and 18, don't you? He says, and I say that thou art Peter, that's your name, and upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell should not prevail against it. Yes, it's, I tell you, it's hard uh, to get the world to see our connection uh, to the body of Christ when we are marching and we are moving to the same beats that the world moves and marches to. It's hard, I tell you, to speak to one another. Now, I'm talking about the Christian now. When we are not coming alongside one another to encourage one another, to comfort one another, that we that we might come uh, from among them, not because we are better than them, but because we know better. Can I get a witness here? He is the great physician. Thank you, Lord. He is the doctor in the sick room. Amen. And he's saying to us in Mark 2 11, he says, arise and take up thy bed and go into thy own house. Do I need to drop another one in now? Look, take up your cross daily and follow the Lord. Amen. There's no comparison to following him and following the world. Oh no no, there's there's no uh, there's no no strength that the world holds. Now I I know the the good book says, "What well, does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul?" Surely the the world can entice. We know that the devil is the uh, the prince of of this this world, Amen, in which we're living in today. But he may be mighty. Guess what? But God is almighty. Thank you, God. Take up your cross and follow him because there is a need for unity in the body. There's a need for unity in that word in which we share with one another. And there's also a need for the unity in the body of Christ. Christ, uh, Jesus is, is sovereign in the body too. He can do whatever he wants to do. Yeah, the pastor is to be the bishop, to be the overseer, to be the one who, who is the manager, but Jesus Christ is to be the Lord. Amen? 
Oh, yes, deacons have uh, an important ministry to render in the church. But that rendering is not the running of the church. No, no, the only boss that the church needs has already been appointed. And that's in his name is Jesus Christ. Oh, yes, to be the law, the head of the church means that God has already appointed him to a, post, to a position of authority. As head of the church, uh, Jesus has been given the right to make requests. He has the right to issue orders, if you will, or uh, to make uh, requisitions. Yes, if we, if we want to experience a rich and an abundant life, we must recognize that we belong to him and act like we belong to him. The New Testament views the church as the body of Christ, which has been uh, constituted through the word of the Holy Spirit in all that we have submitted to and the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Oh yes, I tell you, we, we have to have a body that is united. Uh, it's, it's, you you want to know some of the worst feelings a Christian can have is when he's in a body uh, or around a body of believers and he feels alienated or feels like uh, the 11th finger uh, on your hand. Can I get a witness here? He feels out of place. He feels like there's no, no need for him or her because he cannot uh, complete with those who are doing what they're doing. But the body, I tell you, needs unity. First Corinthians 12 and 12 says, for uh, as the body is one and had many members, and all the members of that one body, being many or one body, and so is Christ Jesus. Oh yes, the body needs to have that union so that we can move as a well-oiled machine through this world. The church in Corinth was divided. The church in Corinth was torn asunder uh, by a party spirit. Come on, give it up. Amen. A, 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 a much rival spirit, if you will. And Paul wrote his epistles to try to solve some of the problems that were dividing the church. Now, uh, there has to be diversity in the body. Hear me now, not division, but um, uh, the great diversity of the, of the church body is illustrated by uh, various organs that make up the human body. Let's just talk about that for a minute. As, as the different organs of the body, the human body, have their own unique function, even so, different members in the church have been given ultimate ministries to render uh, by the one Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. There has to be some harmony uh, in the body of Christ. Oh yeah, working together, we, we surely we sharpen uh, one another. But I think we uh, we sharpen iron so much until we until we cut one another. We sharpen it so much until uh, now the thing that we're cutting have have are now uh, small pieces, so many little pieces until we don't even know what we're getting. Oh yeah, we don't know if if it's milk. Or if it's meat, we don't know if it's a loaf or if it's crumbs. We need to bring it together. Yes, there must be harmony in the body of Christ. Not harmony. Come on, uh, uh, in the body. Uh, but we need some harmony. We need grace, uh, not grits. Come on, we we need to pull it together so that it can be recognized as what it really is. Yes, the body is to work together. And there must be some harmony in the body of Christ. 
No members ought to look down uh, on upon uh, one another unless he's reaching down to pick a brother or a sister up. Oh yes, no individual member of the church is to be considered as little value or being unneeded. I need you and you need me. We're all a part of God's body. No, no individual member uh, is to act superior, my Lord, uh, to other members of the body. You know, there's some certain go-to folk in our church houses today. Can I get a witness here? And uh, I don't care what you say about it, unless they have some say-so, uh, uh, nothing te seems to happen. And, and I declare that that needs to change today. Uh, it should have been changed when Jesus uh, rolled a stone away. Can I get a witness here? It should have been changed when uh, he got up with all power in his hand, and it did change. It seems that we have not conformed to the body of Christ. We're still trying to do our own thing and claim titles uh, that are not ours to have. We are members, and we ought to treat it uh, uh, with some, uh, some, some respect and not be inferior uh, to one another. Yes, if you are uh, today at, or this evening at seven o'clock, I don't even know who's playing, but a football team's going. One of the teams going to win. The one who wins is those who play their own position in their own part. You can't have eleven quarterbacks. That's not going to work. No, no. You need to make sure that everybody on that team uh, knows their position and knows what it is to do. Some somebody got to got to guard. Somebody got to block. Somebody got to catch the ball. Somebody got to run the ball. Somebody got to be the center to snap that ball to the quarterback. But all players must must play their own positions. So much so it is in the church today. Uh, there is solidarity in the body of Christ. Oh, yes. If one member suffers, all of the members should suffer together with that member. Amen. If one uh, member is honored, all of the members should rejoice together with that member. Hallelujah. Yeah, the member uh, of the body ought to have the same care one for another as they have for themselves. Amen. You, you can't love somebody else until you begin, first of all, to love yourself. Yes, and you must have the love of God in you. God is love. Can I get a witness? And being the body or part of the body of Christ today is essential when you look at all that we're going through. We did not just start going through either. Let me drop that in for free. We've always had to have to deal with and reflect back on the word when God reminds us that it is he who has brought us out of bondage. It is he who is, is leading us into a promised land. And if the church is to be a living organism through which the living Christ carries out his purpose and performs his work in the present day, there are some great truths that we need to accept and some great truths that we need to practice. Oh, yes, you don't have to point a finger. Uh, that three pointing back at you, but we all need to be an encourager, encourage one another. And if we can't encourage one another, encourage yourself to know that he died on the cross for you. If there were nobody else, he still would have hung out on Calvary's hill just for you. Oh yes. And in the conversion experience, Christ came to live within each believer. Yes, I'm asking today, does he live inside of you? Christ came in to make our bodies a dwelling place for the Holy Spirit. Yeah, he's not going to enter in into an unclean building. No, no, and expect good things to come out. Need I tell you that a good tree can only give good fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. It's in the book. Yeah, Christ came in to see 
uh, with our eyes the needs of others and the needs of opportunity for ministry and where you and I might go to serve. He came into life, into our lives, uh, in our hearing, that our ears can hear the cries of despair and disaster, as well as hear the voice of God calling us to serve. Christ came in, yeah, to think with our minds and to feel every fault of God. Yeah, only when we come to think as Jesus thinks, can we truly become like Jesus in our lives. Let the same mind that is in Christ Jesus be inside of you. Yeah, Christ came in uh, to live that he might work through us, through our hands and our feet, to render ministry and mercy and helpfulness uh, to a world today. He came, uh, yeah, that he might walk through the world with our feet, carrying the gospel to one and all. I want us today to be mindful, let the same mind, yeah, that is in Christ Jesus, be in us. But Paul goes on to tell us uh, that there has to be some transforming. Yeah, don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I know you've had some rough days, uh, but if you put it in the balance uh, of life, I, I will believe that your good days outweigh your bad days. Today, my brother, my sisters, if you have not yet let Jesus Christ come into your life, come in and let him be your savior. You do wise to do that today. For he stands at the heart, I tell you, knocking to bring you a gift of forgiveness, to bring you a new life. If you would just trust in him and let him be the Lord and the Savior and the teacher, I'd even go far and say, even a friend. Let him become the Lord of your life. Perhaps there are some today who are listening by way of the internet, who know about the living God. You need to know him for yourself and invite him, yeah, into your life or, or into your body so that your body might be a, a local expression of what God looks like in an everyday walk and sojourn. Yeah, the world needs to see what uh, the Lord looks like driving a bus down the street. Uh, yeah, the world needs to know uh, uh, what the Lord looks like. Uh, yeah, sitting behind uh, or at a desk uh, on your computer. Um, yeah, the world needs to know uh, mm, what the Lord looks like. Uh, yeah, uh, as he goes in and out of uh, public and Kroger, uh, yeah, I believe uh, on one hour you ought to be so thankful uh, uh, marching and down uh, uh, the produce aisle uh, that you ought to say, what a mighty God we serve. Uh, thank you, Lord, uh, for all uh, that you've done for me. Uh, and you ought to stop and pause uh, and hear uh, the next aisle or two or three hours over somebody saying the same thing. He had done great things for me. Yes, we ought to allow the Lord to come in and to take up residence. Don't fight it, but let him fulfill his purpose. And that is to let us be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, when he shall appear. Yes, well, one day he's coming back again. 
in. And when he comes, he's coming, riding on a cloud. That's why I get excited when it's storming outside for that many clouds in the sky. Yes, but he can come on a clear day. But I just get excited for I can see the cloud. And I wonder if you get excited when you can see the body of Christ coming together fitly joined right uh, and in our right position uh, doing the work uh, that Christ has given us to do. Uh, yes, uh, I tell you, don't let your heart be hardened. Uh, no, no, but respond to him through faith. And to respond to him through faith is to show some love to one another, to show some joy even in the darkness of day. Because don't you know that he expects us to be more like him. Oh, God bless you today. If we look at the body of Christ and you ought to recognize and be glad to know that your, 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 your phalanges are still working. You ought to know uh, that you can turn and, and move and have your being. You ought to thank God uh, for a cerebellum and a medullum. You ought to be able uh, to tell God, thank you, Father, that I can still uh, know my left from my right and put one foot in front of the other that I have a mouth that I can declare that he is the king of kings and the lord of lords God bless you today that we so move in a forward motion not to go back but only to remember from where he has brought us from and then declare to a world that may be doubtful and skeptical that he's coming again God bless you today in all that you do. Yes, hunker down, not just in the house, hunker down in his word. I dare you to look at his word and find out that he loves you more than you love yourself. Keep on pushing forward. Keep on reaching to a higher mark. God will bless you as he always has. If I would ask you how many times has he ever brought you out, you'd have to say every time. He's never left you nor will he ever forsake you. We thank him today, and he will come in if you would yet but open up your heart and let him take up residence with you. The good book says that he will he will sup with you and you with him. He'll, he'll bring groceries in, hallelujah, to feed your soul. God bless you, and may he ever keep you is our prayer.